Nick Kristoff is known from his writing as somebody who speaks the truth, and so I think people trust Nick. Nick and his wife, uh, Cheryl, have written this incredible book called Half the Sky. The book is a book of incredible stories of girls and women around the world who have overcome incredible adversities to give us hope that we can make a difference in the future. Nick, tell me, why'd you write the book? You know, it was really a long time in the works. I guess if you really go back, it was when we lived in China and we covered the Tiananmen Square uh, killings. But then we realized that every year there were about 39,000 Chinese baby girls that were being killed because they didn't have the same access to food and health care as boys. And we hadn't given them one column inch of attention. Yeah. And it kind of made us begin to see development through the prism of gender. And once you, as you know better yeah. than I, once you begin to look through that prism, then it's astonishing how relevant it is. Half the Sky, tell me what that title means and, and why you chose that. Well, the truth is we had just an incredibly difficult time figuring out what the title should be. We were a little afraid people would think it was an astronomy book, but <laughs> <laughs> it comes from a Chinese expression, uh, ban tian tian, that women hold up half the sky. And indeed, that's obviously an aspiration more than a reality, but you know, if we want to fight poverty and extremism, as, as you know very well, then that is the best route to do that, to help women indeed hold up their half of the sky. It is half the world, and, and if we are holding back half the world's potential, you know, we're really losing a lot. And I think that message in some ways comes across more than sometimes talking about it as a rights issue or talking yeah. about it as a gender issue, but I think when people get that, the math of it. That's right. I mean, I think that here in this country, often the human rights argument really impact, I mean, really strikes people. But in other countries, especially those that tend to have the biggest gender problems, right. my sense is that the argument that really carries the day is that they can grow faster, they can be more stable right. if they educate girls, bring them into the formal economy. Yeah. You know, you, you uh, have some pretty moving stories in there. I know you saw a lot of women and girls in your uh, journey, so why the particular stories that you wrote about? It's our sense that people are sometimes afraid, uh, scared off from development because the stories are scary. And so we wanted to show that there is hope and that there are people who may have faced really terrible things, but they have overcome them. And that with a little bit of help, they can, they can do that. One of the cases we write about that is, is close to home um, is a woman in Burundi, which at the time oh, yeah. was the poorest country right. in the world, a woman called Goretti. And she had been enrolled in a care program this is a woman who had never even been allowed to touch money. Her husband, Bernard, was beating her all the time. And she just, she was a completely squandered asset. And then she got a $2 loan um, through care. And she used it to buy fertilizer uh, to put on her potato crop. She had a great crop of potatoes, sold it. Then she upped the ante and uh, started a little banana beer business. So she gradually began kind of multiplying her presence into being the banana beer magnate, goat farmer, and uh, Bernard was clearly very wary about this, but then at one point he got malaria, mm. and the only way his hospital bill could be paid mm. was with the money that Goretti was earning. And all of a sudden he began to see women's empowerment in new light and realize he could be a beneficiary as well. It doesn't always work that smoothly, as you know, um, but when it works, it is just so exciting to see how not only do you have one individual whose life is transformed, but it is of huge benefit to the community, to the right. country, to the to the men. People sometimes think it's a kind of male versus female right. gender war. I mean, the men are huge beneficiaries when exactly. the women work as well. Yeah, because it's really a catalyst for change in many ways. And yeah. you can do it with so little. I mean, I think that story about the, the message about the two dollars and what that did to change her life and her husband's life and her family's life. That's right. My, the metaphor that I always like for aid, you know, when it works right, is a little drop of oil and kind of the crankcase of development and you know, with it then things begin to work normally and then you've got a virtuous cycle and, right. and indeed in that case Goretti is now uh, educating her daughters. You've talked about our Care Action Network from time to time. It's a way of people getting involved. Why is it important for individuals to get involved, particularly in the policy arena? In general my sense is that our leaders never really lead on moral questions. They essentially follow. And that the way to um, get them to act is to hold their feet to the fire. And that the way to hold their feet to the fire is to um, go to care.org and 
get on the CARE Action Network and make those calls and make it clear that this is something that, that voters care about. I guess in a way uh, we give them cover to do the things that uh, many of them would like to do but maybe wouldn't be willing to step out there on their own and do it. They want to get calls from constituents telling yeah, them exactly. to, because right. that will, as you say, give them cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This book, it looks like it's going to be a real success. Are, are you surprised that there's been so much attention to it? Certainly in the publishing world, there was some skepticism that a do-gooder book <laughs> about some really pretty tough right. things. Uh, would have commercial appeal. So the day it hit the New York Times bestseller list, um, that was a, you know, that was very reassuring that there is a, um, a broad audience for this. And I think that reflects a real tipping point out there because of the groundwork that CARE has done that so many other organizations all around the country have done. And that, uh, you know, the mood is changing, that these are really being recognized now. As the, the, this issue, the time has come. It's wonderful that Nick and his wife Cheryl have written this incredible book to bring greater attention and visibility to the plight of the global poor, particularly girls and women around the world. But they can't do it alone. So what you can do is to make sure that your voice is heard and that, that policymakers and the public understand that there are people who care about these issues. Join the Care Action Network. It's a network of volunteers around the country who make sure that the issues related to the global poor are not forgotten. Make sure that your representatives vote for the Growth Act. The Growth Act is going to help give girls and women the tools that they need to empower themselves and lift themselves out of poverty. So there's a lot that you can do by taking action and making sure that uh, your voice is heard.